computer architecture is changing and so does the way that we need to write programs. So for example, a modern processor, a CPU, may include 4, 6, 8, 12, 16 cores. They can each run an individual process. Now something like a GPU is going to include hundreds or thousands of uh, something like a CUDA core or other type of uh, GPU individual processing unit and and we can also write instructions that can run in parallel for those uh, you see even individualized specialized hardware for things like tensor processing units for TensorFlow or for you know other packages that can run machine learning so overall, as we start to decrease the dimension of those transistors and try to pack more and more, uh, one of the ways that we're able to do more computing is to break it into these individual units that can each process the code individually. And perhaps we can also write code that can exploit the structure of those. And we get on to other architectures. Uh, you know, maybe that won't be necessary. We're going to hit some... Uh, some fundamental limitations and if we do things like quantum computing or other things that might um, open that back up to do uh, single threaded processing. But let's talk about multi-threaded processing especially for uh, something like Gecko or uh, sorry Python and, and I'll show a Gecko example as well. I just want to show you a very simple uh, Python programming that uses the threading application and I'll show you how to apply this so you can do a simple parallel processing application with optimization in Python Gecko. So we're going to import threading and then time and random. All right, and I'll just go ahead and run this, just to import those packages. And then we wanted to create a new class, and we'll call that my thread, but you can do name it anything you'd like. And then threading.thread. Um, and in that, we need to define an initialization function and you need the self in there uh, first of all to be able to tell uh, which thread you're calling to be, in this case i'll give it a unique id number and i'll just say that self.id equals id and that's just for me to keep track of which one it is and then i'll do self.delay so i'm going to make uh, the self i'm going to give it different uh, properties, different variables, ID and delay, and I'm going to assign that just a random number of seconds. And uh, here's threading dot thread and uh, init self. So I'm actually um, going to initialize uh, the thread. Okay, and now in my run. Okay, I'm going to have time, sleep, and I'm going to put in the delay there. So each thread is just going to wait for a certain amount of time, and then it's going to print something out. It's going to print its own ID when it's done. Okay, so it's going to wait between 0 and 1 seconds. We don't know how long each one's going to take. And uh, so I'm just going to create this new function. Okay, it's available to be called. And in the next one, I'm going to... Uh, create and start some threads. So I'm going to have a, just a blank list of threads and for I in range 10 I'm going to create 10 new threads and I'll append that to my list. Okay, I'm going to create a new thread and this is going to be the ID. So when you have self here it just ignores that first argument. You only really need to do this optional argument the ID here and that's going to be the I. So it's going to start with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 up to nine and then I'm gonna have threads I and then I'll start it okay so I'm gonna start it right away you could create them and then start them later in another loop if you wanted to <clears throat> and then I'll print number of active threads and there's various uh, functions within threading like for example active count you can see how many threads are active and this is going to include other threads that are on your system as well. So, you know, I think by default I might have like six running threads right now. Um, and a lot of them aren't active, but I'm going to add 10 to that list. 
All right, now we want to wait for all the threads to complete. Okay, so for T in threads, I want to join up right here. And then I'll print out after they're all done, I'll do threads complete. Sometimes you want to also have a check in there for the maximum amount of time. So if one of the threads doesn't complete, you'll go ahead and terminate it after a certain amount of time. All right, so uh, basically I just created a new class with my own thread. And this is the initialization right here. This is a setup. And then this is how I run the thread. And then in here, I'm going to start the thread, create it and start it. And then here, I'll join them up uh, so they all complete together. So if I run this, you can see that all the threads are complete. And there's something interesting that happened here. Two threads were trying to print at the same time, and they printed kind of uh, to the screen at the same time, so you didn't have these, uh, you know, sequentially. And so that's, you know, you might have to put a break in there for the other ones so that they don't, um, if you have some output going on, you make sure that's separated. All right, so here there was no conflict on the printing. And if I do it again, okay, you can see a little bit of a conflict there. Uh, but active threads, I went from 6 to 15, all right, and uh, you can see that, um, you know, active threads here, after I created one, you can see the count go up. So I already started with a certain number, I started with 5, and then when I created the next one, the first one, it became 6, and then went all the way up to 15, and then as I started to complete, uh, you can see that I'm zero, the one that I started first, that finished last. It may have had the longest delay. And let's just go ahead and print that out. Let's go ahead and print out uh, threads complete. And then I want to print out, um, let's see, I'll do my thread, okay, um, dot ID. Let me just see if that works, okay. ID, let's see if uh, threads complete. Oh, I did that on the very last, okay. So let's do, let's do this instead of here. All right, I'm gonna print out um, up here, not only the ID, but I'll also do the delay. All right, and that is going to be self dot delay right there. So when I create it, I'll go ahead and print it out. Um, I need to run this one first, and then I can run this with the new function. Okay, so you can see the order of the delay. It was right here. Uh, the ones that are taking longer are gonna finish later and all the way up to here. So the ones that uh, conflicted, you can see they had about identical delays. Um, and so they were printing out about the same time. So let's do something just a little bit more complicated now. Uh, this is gonna be an optimization problem. Um, I'm gonna solve a series of optimization problems all simultaneously using Python Gecko and I'm going to have different values of B and A, and each one of these points here is going to represent a separate optimization result, and then I'm going to plot this surface with all of them. Uh, but if I did it sequentially, I did this one first, and then this one second, and third, it's going to be you know, sequential and take a long time to visit all of these points, so I want to parallelize it. I can do that with the threading application. All right, and uh, let's see. I'm going to come in here to uh, just go through this pretty quickly. I'm going to import NumPy and threading. Uh, some of the similar ones that you saw before, but also include Gecko. And then I also have the threading class, similar to what we just saw. But I need ID, but then also A and B values. All right, and then I have self ID. I'm going to create my gecko model and then put in A and B. So instead of self, uh, I renamed that to S equals self just to make it a little bit shorter. Okay, and then the objective 
for a and b is going to be currently not a number and then I'm going to initialize uh, some variables and I'll have four variables and give them initial guess values with lower and upper bounds and um, let's go ahead and do uh, this equation it's the sum or it's the product of all the variables is going to be greater than equal to s a okay that's my first equation and my second equation is a sum of the squares right here is going to be equal to s b so as I change this it's going to change the optimization uh, solution and give me a different objective here's my objective function okay this is the Hochschakowsky number 71 optimization problem let me just go to that just to show you uh, which one that is uh, so you can see it mathematically as well I'm here under optimization and it's right here but I've just substituted instead of the 25 I think I did a less than here and then 25 and then I also substituted this with the B value okay but this is the optimization problem that we're solving over and over again with different right hand side coefficients all right I'm gonna set some global options solve with the uh, steady state optimization with the AP opt solver and then I'll initialize my thread and then here's how I run I'm gonna sleep for a little bit of time just so I don't start all of them at once and then I'll print out that I'm running that application then I'll solve the optimization problem and retrieve if we're successful if not we're just gonna say it's not a number just so it doesn't mess up the plot all right and then it will clean up I did that just so it deletes uh, the gecko files and uh, let's do optimize optimize at mesh points now so I'm going to create values between 20 and 30 for a with intervals of 2 and values between 30 to 50 for B with intervals of 2 as well If I make um, you know more intervals here then it's going to just take longer if this number is lower I'm going to create a mesh grid which is going to create a matrix of A and B values all the ones that I need to visit and then I'll create my threads list and I'll calculate objective at all the mesh grid points so this is going to be a nested for loop but I'm going to do multi-threaded not sequentially here okay I'm going to append the threads increment the ID and then I'm going to run applications simultaneously but I'm only going to run eight at a time I don't want to overload by giving it maybe a hundred or so threads all at once so I'm just going to limit it to eight all right so when my active count is greater than max threads then I'm just going to sleep for a little bit and check again and uh, otherwise I'm going to start the thread and then I'll check for completion all right and there's the max time that I have uh, which is three and if it uh, takes longer than three then I'm going to uh, stop it okay after it uh, finishes all these I want it to terminate after a maximum amount of time all right uh, and you can see that uh, right here okay if you wanted it to join up you could do the t dot join and have all of them complete and here's my objective function I'm just gonna store my values and then retrieve them into that matrix so I can plot a B and OBJ together I'm gonna create a 3d plot and it's just gonna be a surface plot and then I'm gonna add some things that make it look nice and then save it <clears throat> all right let's run this one I went through that pretty quick but I'll show you the I'll give you the link for the source code in the video if you'd like to go and run that later okay so it's running these applications you can see which ones are completing and I just printed out the IDs and there is the surface plot so this would have taken a lot longer 
uh, to complete all those had I run it in a sequential manner. Uh, so I did this with multi-threaded and did it in parallel instead with Python Gecko. Um, so there is the solution. As I change B and A, here's the optimal objective function for those. Okay, well, thanks for joining. I hope you, um, you know, like this video. Uh, feel free to, you know, make a, leave a comment below. There are other parallelization packages as well. Um, you know, Gecko works really well with multi-threading, but others are going to have to, you're going to have to use other parallelization methods to do that in Python. But overall, there's a lot of, there are a lot of options um, for parallelizing code and taking advantage of some of the architectures that we mentioned uh, as we, you know, go to different type of architectures with, uh, you know, especially GPUs, CPUs are having more cores in them and we want to be able to write code that is going to be able to fully utilize the capability of those multi-core, multi-processing uh, hardware.